This is part one in our series of lectures on section 4.1 entitled Functions as Relations. In this lecture, we give the basic definitions associated with functions. Suppose we have two sets A and B and a relation R from A to B. So remember that that means nothing more than simply that R is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross B. In chapter 4, we're going to use the notation x, comma y, an element of r, rather than this notation. Now, if we let a and b be sets, then we say that f is a function from a to b if the following three properties hold. First of all, it should be a relation from a to b. Secondly, the domain of that relation should be all of a. And thirdly, we have this property here, that for all x in A and for all y and z in B, if x, y and x, z are both elements of the relation, then y equals z. So 2 and 3 are telling us what additional properties a subset of A cross B has to have in order that it actually represents a function. The first one is telling us that Every single x in A has to lie in the domain, and in other words, for every x in A, there has to exist at least one y in B, such that x comma y is an element of the relation. This one is telling us that if you look at the first component of an element of a relation, there can only be exactly one um, second component. In other words, to each x in the domain, we can associate only one y in the um, only one y such that x comma y is an element of the relation. When we're dealing with functions rather than just merely relations, we're going to use this notation rather than this notation, and the reason being that since the second component in the relation is uniquely determined according to this property here. Um, there can only be one such thing, and so we can refer to it as f of x. And when we refer to this f of x, we're going to refer to it as the value of f at x. We give a few more general definitions. Uh, suppose we have two sets a and b, and f is a function from a to b. Then we abbreviate the statement that f is a function from a to b with this notation here. So when you see this, you should read it as f is a function from a to b. This is actually a sentence. We already know what is meant by the range of f, because we know what is the range of any relation. The range is defined formally to be the set of all y and b, such that there exists an x in a, such that y is equal to f of x. So that doesn't change uh, with functions. We refer to the set b as being the codomain of f. So the codomain of f is really any can be viewed as any set that contains the range. It can be much bigger than the range, for example. If x is an element of A, we refer to f of x as the image of x, or as I said on the previous slide, the value of f at x. If y is an element for the range of f, then we refer to any x for which y is equal to f of x as the pre-image of y. And any element x of a um, is referred to as an argument. So note that by definition of a function, every argument x has exactly one image, but each y in the range can have several pre-images. It's, it's possible for it to, it doesn't have to, but it might have several pre-images. Each, for each x, there's exactly one f of x, but for each y, there could conceivably be several x's for which f of x is equal to that y. I want to give you some notation that we can use when we want to specify particular functions. So let's consider this. So this is a very formal definition. Um, it's a collection of ordered pairs, and it really does represent a function. It's the set of all ordered pairs of the form x, comma, x squared minus 1 in R2, such that x is an element of R. So in general, we're not going to express a function in this way. 
if we wanted to find a function um, that's given by this, we, we would write define f uh, define f from r to r by f of x equals x squared minus 1. And you'll also see me often say it instead as define f from r to r by x maps to x squared minus 1. So what you do is you use this little vertical line with an arrow coming out of it to indicate where each x in the domain goes to according to f. So one of the points I'm making here is that when you're specifying a particular function, say using this notation, you don't have to quantify the x. It's understood when you write this that it's referring to a typical x in the domain of f. So now we want to talk about what we mean when we say the two functions are equal. Well, strictly speaking, a function is a relation, and a relation is a certain subset of a certain Cartesian product. So to say that those two functions are equal is really just simply to say that the two sets defining those functions are equal. But um, there's a theorem we can write down which gives us a simpler way of, of seeing when two functions are equal. And here's the theorem. Um, two functions are equal if and only if the following two properties holds. They have the same domain, and given any x in the domain, f of x and g of x are the same. So this is something that we'll find rather useful, although I, I think it's something intuitively completely obvious to you, but at least you should recognize that from a technical point of view, it's not the definition of equality. The definition of equality is that the sets defining um, the two functions are equal as sets. So this is really a theorem, and the book actually goes through a proof of it, but I'm I'm not going to take the time to write the proof of this, but we will make use of it in a later lecture. Now, if we don't specify the domain of a function, if we just simply write it as a, some formula, then we're going to assume that it's as large as is possible. So, for example, if I merely define a function by writing this, so the understanding implicit in the notation is that the domain is a certain subset of the real numbers, and uh, since we know that we're not allowed to divide by zero, we would have to assume that x isn't zero, and so we would infer, if I just informally write this, that it's a function from uh, r with zero removed into the set of real numbers. Now you'll notice that this particular function, if x is positive, then x divided by absolute x is equal to 1, and if x is negative, then x divided by absolute x is minus 1. So if I defined a new function g of x to be the function that's 1 if x is bigger than or equal to 0, and minus 1 if x is less than, or e is less than 0, then actually that function, strictly speaking, is not equal to this function, because that function has a bigger domain. That function has the domain, the entire set of real numbers.